host of Broke. My name is Kieran, and today we are back at the Commerce Casino. Gonna be hopping into whatever we can get into. Our name's on the 510, as well as I think the 1020 list, but we'll see as we get in there. And uh, I just wanted to let you guys know one big thing before we get inside, and I'll try to get into a little bit of a quieter environment to let you guys know. Unfortunately, after a lot of thinking, I've decided that this is gonna be the last episode that I make for Close to Broke. I appreciate all the support and everything, and, and uh, I'm asking nearly 15,000 subscribers, but uh, the pressure has obviously gotten to me. And uh, yeah, I just wanna put out a good final vlog and, and, and let you guys know I appreciate you guys. April Fools! No, I'm not ending the vlog. That was a, that was a pretty cringy joke, but uh, yeah, let's get back into some poker. We're too early on into this, this journey to quit, right? I love you guys as always. Let's hop in today's episode and hopefully run good. As I was editing the video, I quickly forgot to mention you guys, if you did not know already, we're going to be hosting our very first meetup game on the East Coast at the Horseshoe Casino in Baltimore, Maryland. We're going to be doing it in conjunction with our lovely friend Wolfgang Poker. It'll be on April 24th. Save the date. It's a Sunday. It's going to be a blast, a wonderful time. I hope to see you guys there. Make sure to call this phone number right here to save your seat. The only way you can confirm a seat is by calling this number. They're expecting you guys to be calling. Let them know that you want to be in the C2B Wolfgang meetup game. See you guys there. Today's session consists of a 5, 10, 20 game here at Commerce. In for $3,000 and we're getting things going off to a blazing start. There's four limps. Again, we're playing the $20 blind straddle. So it's not a straddle, it's blind. Anyways, we look down at Ace Jack here from the big blind. I'm going to go ahead and isolate these limpers for $160. Uh, too many limpers, honestly, to name every single one of them in the notes quickly enough, but I do decide to isolate, as mentioned. Only the really aggressive but fairly good action player decides to make the call, and I am going to be out of position for the entirety of the hand, and there's quite some money to fight in the middle for. So, when the flop comes, queen, knight, deuce, rainbow, I decide to down bet to a really puny sizing. Don't need to go very large here, I think a bet is going to get all of his worst hands to fold and even some of his better ace highs like ace jack so after the bet of 80 dollars my opponent decides to quickly make the call and we're going off to a turn card that doesn't change a whole lot to the board texture as it comes at seven there is now a full rainbow out there after a little bit of pause i end up checking it over to my opponent and luckily for me he decides to check it back so at this point i think he has some semblance of showdown value and when we get off to a river that comes the jack of spades that is a wonderful sight for my very sore eyes. At this point, I think it's mandatory that I go for some sort of value. I think betting somewhere around 70% pot or a little more is a great idea. So I end up betting $300. My opponent snap raises out of nowhere to $880. This is where my mind kind of goes all over the place. I just don't know what kind of hand he's representing here. I think that King 10 might be taking over the betting lead on the turn if he only has King high. King 10 or 10 8 suited? Which one? It's really unlikely for me to go puny here and check the turn here and to have a really strong hand at this point. You can actually hear me in the audio asking him questions, trying to get a read off the situation. For me, the only hand that can be raising for this specific sizing, nearly 3x my, my bet, has to be a hand specifically like King 10. And I feel like a hand like Queen Jack would definitely consider betting on the turn. And obviously, if he checks it back, this is a mandatory raise on the river. So, in my opinion, for the hands he will have for value played in this specific manner would have to be Queen Jack or King 10. I mean, I don't want to pretend like I can make up a fluffing range for him because it kind of just is uncapped. With the little bit I've played with this player, you guys have seen him on you know episodes past. He just has that button in him where he just goes crazy. And I think I'm at the very top of my buff catching range. It's really nice that I, it, I, I'm not blocking him from holding a hand like King Jack or even a hand like King Nine, where I think he could definitely consider turning his hand into a bluff. So after a really long pause, I end up making the hero call. My opponent shows ace three of spades. So a very, very interesting float on the flop. But that's what these really small sizings are going to do for my opponents. It's going to put them in really weird spots where they just end up calling. They don't know what to do, so they just blast off to me. Luckily, I was able to pick off that massive bluff there. And early on in the session, we're looking like we're heading in the right direction. In the following hand, there is a more of a limping bonanza going on. And we're catching up live during the action. We look down at King-Queen. There's two limps to me. When I look down at King-Queen offsuit in the small blind... 
I decide to make it $125 to go. And unfortunately, the big blind, after a little bit of pause, decides to three bet us in position to $350. Pulls back over to me. And last time we jammed with this hand or played it a little more aggressive, I should say. This time around, I'm going to go ahead and give this guy the street credit he deserves. He was kind enough to tell me and show me that he had ace queen of spades. So, you know, we dodged a bullet there, I guess. But uh, I don't think our four bet was going to work there if we had it within us. Got to show the good with the bad, right? Moving along in today's session, we are in the low jack and we look down at king nine offsuit. Pretty much the nut low of the opening range I'll be having here. But the one thing that's enticing is we have a fairly fun action player here from the big blind. So I decide to open $60. The big blind and the straddle both decide to make the call. And we're going off to a flop that comes for three deuce, two clubs, and a diamond. I am holding the king of clubs here. So when the action checks through to me, I don't mind continuing to check this. I'd hate to bet and get raised here. I'd have to fold my hand 100% of the time. I'd rather realize my equity here, and king high can definitely be good. I have some showdown value. So when the turn comes the nine of diamonds, this is where things get very, very fun. As our action player from the straddle decides to lead off for $75. Never raising here, I think that'd be overplaying my hand, and I could scare off my opponents from weaker nines, so i just make the call, and the big blind decides to make the call. And the river comes, a deuce of spades. You know what they say, right? Deuces have never changed anything, ever. When it checks over to me, I've got to go for value here. The board is paired. It's unlikely for my opponents to have any deuces in their ranges. So, I end up betting for $225 after it checks over to me, don't need to go very large here. I think this is the perfect sizing. Somewhere around 60 to 70% pot. My goal is to get called by a weaker nine or a non-believing four. Unfortunately, the big blind decides to make the fold immediately. And our friend from the straddle folds instantly as well. Going to take down a healthy little pot here to continue us going in the proper direction. Hopefully green is all we see for the rest of today's session. As if things are going to continue like they are now. We're looking to be in pretty beautiful profit bill. This has to be one of the best 510 games I have ever been in, at least in recent memory. It's an outstanding action game. Action player sitting with well over $10,000 in his stack. The vibes are going, that's for sure. So much so that I throw the $40 blind raise on, which is a double straddle, or I guess a double blind raise at this point. The cutoff, the button, and the big blind all decide to limp. It gets over to me. I have 9-7 off suit. I don't have an, you know, I don't have an option anyways, but if I did, I think I'd be checking 9-7 off. Anyways, we're going to a flop that is pretty juicy. Jack-8-5 rainbow. We flop the old double gutter. It's always funner, as they say. It checks over to our aggressive friend here from the button. He decides to bet $100. I end up making the call and no one else does. The turn comes a weird card as it comes in 9 of spades. We now make a pair, but... It also brings in a straight draw that I think my opponent can be betting with on the flop. When I check it over to him, he decides to go bombs away, betting $400, a massive sizing. And he's definitely done this in the past. And when he does it, it's usually, you know, fairly balanced. Sure, you can have some bluffs here, but I just don't like my kicker. I don't like that I'm now not drawing to the nuts. So I end up making what is a fairly nitty fold, I guess, or maybe ABC, depending on the kind of player you are. He was kind enough to show me that he had a six of clubs. So I guess I was only losing to specifically Jack six or six, seven. Unlikely that he had six, seven because I was blocking it. But hey, you never know. I'm going to pretend like I made the right fold, though. Like I said, the game is ridiculous. A couple days in a row, we are at the Commerce Casino now and we find ourselves in some pretty good spots. As opposed to the last episode that you guys saw in the 2040 game, uh, I got table change and the game ended up being bad. No table change here. The team is amazing. The action has been great. We made a really sick hero call down with H Jack. And now we're just looking for our fortunes to continue to turn. We haven't really made any big hands yet. It doesn't feel like so. I mean, now it's all about staying committed and continuing to fire. And, uh, you know, hopefully we get a little lucky and get hit by the deck. You guys will obviously hear how it goes, and I'll see you guys in a bit. For now, it's just time for me to head back in. When a game is this good, I feel almost guilty being away from the table. So I got to head back in. I got to make some money. And uh, you guys will obviously hear more as the session goes along. As we make our way back from our mid-session update, 
I'm feeling pretty focused, and like I said, to this point, everything has been going fairly okay. Nothing too crazy, nothing too great. We find ourselves in the small blind here. The action player decides to raise to $60. Next to act decides to make the call, and the cutoff was a brand new player to the game, sitting with $1,500 exactly, decides to 3-bet to $250. We look down at the old ace-king offsuit, big slick, here from the small blind. There's no other move, in my opinion, besides making a, a four bet here. Don't need to go too massive. I end up choosing $700. Uh, it's all right. I am out of position. That's my one thing. But by going $700, I leave my opponent a really crappy SPR if he just calls anyways. So in reality, I think going somewhere in the neighborhood of like $550 to $600 is actually better in this case. It's unfortunate that my opponent is playing, you know... Relatively short, considering there is the $20 blind straddle every hand. Anyways, he decides to jam it all in. We decide to make the call. Things are playing out fairly favorable, especially when the flop comes king high. The turn comes a queen, which is a little scary. Obviously, my opponent can have a queen here. And the river comes a three of clubs. Not feeling too worried about the situation as the flush draw misses. And besides pocket queens and aces, I'm not losing to a whole lot here. I announce my hand being ace-king, my opponent is reluctant to show, but he does show pocket aces. Pocket aces is good, sir. Outstanding hand. Unfortunate for us as that uh, we end up losing a massive pot there, but uh, that's just how the cookie crumbles this time around. The only thing that can make me feel any better is if you guys drop a like and subscribe on today's video. it means mean the world to me. Let's get back into the action. As I promised, the action is flowing. A ton of really fun spots in this game. It's I don't know, you feel like you won the lottery when you end up in a game this good. Unfortunately, I haven't been running all that great, but we're still laser focused on the objective at hand. The mission is not yet accomplished. Luckily, in this next hand, we look down at pocket nines here. Gonna go ahead and open it up to $60 as there is a straddle or a blind raise on in this hand. Only the straddler decides to make the call, which is our action player friend. We're going off to a flop that comes jack four, three, rainbow. The opposition decides to check it over to me. I decide to check it to allow him to catch up in some aspects. Moreover, at least allow him to blast off on some streets, as we know he's very capable of. The turn comes with three of clubs as it pairs the board, but it does bring a backdoor flush draw. When he checks it over to me, at this point, it's about time to start betting for value. So I bet $50, and he pretty quickly decides to make the call. The river comes to ace of hearts, and he thinks about it for a brief moment before ending up on a check. I think if he bet, I'd be calling almost any river bet sizing, especially against our opponent friend here. He's very capable of making some big moves. The one thing I will note is that if I bet on this river, one, I think it'd be a little too thin, and that's saying a lot considering who I am. But the other big factor is, is that I think I'd be turning a good hand with showdown value into a kind of a weird bluff. And there's no reason to bluff here. We have way too much showdown value at the end of the day. We're happy to check it down and take down the pot if we may. We go ahead and check it down, and that is exactly what happens as the dealer pushes the pot our way when we show our pocket nines. I'm feeling like I have a really good read on the situation for now. Hopefully, we can carry it along as the session gets deeper into the night. In this next hand, I am under the straddle or the blind race. I decide to make it $60 after I look down at ace 10 offsuit. Only the straddler decides to make the call. We're going off to a flop that comes heads up. 9-8 deuce with two hearts and a spade. The opposition decides to check it to me. I decide to check this through as this is not a board texture that's going to be hitting my range very often from under the gun. The turn card comes a queen of clubs. When he checks it over to me, I decide to bet fairly small here for $50. Don't need to go that large. I think a bet of any size gets most worse hands to fold. And that's kind of the point of it. Equity denial as well as sometimes getting maybe a little bit of a stronger hand to fold, or a hand with reasonable equity to fold. He does end up making the call, and the river comes a four of clubs. When he checks it over to me, I think my hand at this point could use a little bit of a bet for a bluff. The one thing that we do have is a 10, so we do block a hand like jack 10. So it's unlikely for my opponent to have the nuts in this case. So I decide to bet $175. My opponent thinks about it for a moment before... Luckily deciding on a fold. Don't know if I had the best hand. You know, sometimes you can be bluffing with the best hand, but I think more than likely we got him to fold a weak middling pair. And that's kind of the goal of that bet. This next hand might give you deja vu because it gave me deja vu when it happened at the table. I'm in the big blind. 
An early position decides to raise his $60, who's the action friend of the vlog. The button decides to make it $250, and I look down at Ace King here from the blinds. Yet again, the same player, the same dynamics, but all the three same things are going on. At this point, I, there's just no way I cannot raise here. I end up making it a significantly more reasonable sizing this time around, as I decide out of position to make it $550. Folds back to my opponent. At this point, he is playing about $3,000 effective. He ends up making the fold fairly quickly. So lucky for us, we don't have to see a flop. You can never complain when you're taking almost $400 down pre-flop with a non-pair big slick holding. And the moment you guys have all been waiting for is this next hand, the biggest hand of the night, as well as the last hand of the night. So let's get right into it. Before this hand started, this was actually going to be my last hand of the session. So worked out fairly good for us. We looked down at ace queen offsuit from early position. I decide to make it $60. The button decides to make the call. Small blind and the straddle make the call as well. The small blind is the action player that we've been playing with all session. And the flop comes outstanding as it comes ace 10 5 with three hearts. We flop top pair as well as a second nut flush draw. Pretty outstanding flop. The one thing I will add is that I've got a bit a little larger on the seabed here because this is a very dynamic board texture and we're four people deep to this flop. When the action checks over to me, I make a seabed of $185 to which the button calls and the small blind doesn't call and he doesn't fold. He decides on a raise, but not any raise. He decides to jam his entire $12,000 stack into the middle, which obviously has me covered. I have about $2,100 behind at this point, and this is a really sickening spot. I mean, not really. I don't want to overreact. There's no reason to uh, put on a show. The Oscars have well and gone to this point. There's no reason for me to go up and slap this guy in the face like Will Smith did to Chris Rock. So I decide to make the call here. I'm never folding a hand as strong as this. The button instantly folds. We're going off to a run out with thousands of monies in the middle. Thousands of dollars. The turn card pairs the board as it comes to five of diamonds. I'm a little worried, but less so when my opponent starts shaking his head in disgust. But the river comes an eight of hearts. If he flopped the flush, most likely I ended up sucking out on him. But unfortunately, that is not the case. My opponent did not flop a flush. He had king 10 with the king of hearts. Ouch. That one's going to sting really bad. Well, if I was ever going to lose a pot, I don't mind losing pots to action players because they're always going to give it back in some way. But that's it for me today in this session. I'm hanging my head low, but in reality, I'm pretty, I'm pretty satisfied with how I played in today's session. And uh, at the end of the day, I can't beat myself up if I feel like I played well and the cards just didn't run in my favor. That's kind of what happened today. As you guys probably heard, not great news, unfortunately. But hey, you can't complain to get it in. A pretty massive favorite there, even blocking one of the hearts. Ah, it sucks. But, uh, you know, I'm never going to not make that call. As it goes, we were into today's game for 3000 out for a grand total of $0. So that is a net loss of 3 k It's going to happen when you play these uh, these bigger stakes. It just, just goes that way sometime. But... Although I would love to stay in the game because it's the, this is the, probably the best 510 game in California that's not behind closed doors. I do have to go do my work duties. So I appreciate you guys as always. I'll see you guys in the next episode. I thank you guys all for the unbelievable, unbelievable support. Hope you guys like the little April Fool's joke. We are not stopping the channel. I won't stop anytime soon. I'm great for you guys as always. If you guys haven't already, make sure to drop a like down below. Comment as well. And let me know what you guys think about the episodes. Again, if you guys haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification bell. It's time to get in the car and get home. Appreciate you guys. Have a nice day. Doses.